to not have to access the internet through a fixed phone line. The other basic need is the need to have wireless or, or mobility. And you might look at your internal data and work out that younger people tend to be much more likely, when you match the internal data, you might work out that younger people are more likely to be um, in the situation of not wanting, in the segment not having fixed lines. And you could also work out that people who are accessing their internet from lots of different mobile phone towers, because obviously if you've got, but when you use a, a wireless or mobile broadband, you can actually, the phone company can work out which tower people are accessing from, and that gives you a way of identifying the mobility of individual consumers. But the key point is, once you've mapped your internal data onto the customer needs data, you pretty much throw away the needs data. Because if you're able to accurately identify, not even accurately, if you're able to semi-accurately identify different groups of your customers, having used the survey to tell you the way, but then you actually can just use internal data to work out who is who, segmentation becomes a lot more powerful because you're able to 100% accurately allocate people to segments and simply say, we know this customer is in this particular segment and we can get the exact right amount of direct marketing through them or other forms of communication through product offers. Do-it-yourself research. I'm a big fan of do-it-yourself research. I'm not trying to put market research out of business here, but um, if we go back to the big pie chart that I started with, there's a few bits which are quite readily done yourself if you have a constrained budget. At the end of the day, if the market research company's been doing what they've been doing for 50 years, they're going to do it a lot better than you're going to do it if you're doing it yourself more often than not. But if you've got a constrained budget, client management certainly something you can do yourself, so that's a great way to save money. Research design, I don't want to be rude here, but if you're not a market researcher, you can't do it. It's like advertising. Everybody who's not an advertiser, by the way, because they can come up with an ad, everybody who's not a market researcher thinks they can design good market research. They can't. Um, you, you really do, if you're going to do your own, need to engage expertise here because there, there are lots of mistakes that are obvious to any experienced researcher. But if you're not a researcher, you don't know they're a mistake until the end, and I'll come back to that in a second. Um, project management, you can do that yourself. Interviewing and field work, increasingly there's a whole lot of tools to help you do that yourself. Data analysis and reporting, same ways. Strategy and insight, not really a DIY opportunity, and this might sound controversial because most marketers seem to believe that market researchers are quite bad at providing strategy and insight. And there might be some truth in that, but we're quite good at reading numbers. Most marketers are quite bad at reading numbers. And so the challenge becomes that if you don't engage expertise to interpret your data, there's an extraordinary high chance that you get a completely wrong interpretation. And you might come up with a strategy that was brilliant if your interpretation had been correct. And, and the, the obvious example for this is a simple question, such as, will you buy this wonderful new product? Um, every market researcher knows that the answer you get from that is at best indicative. But every client, if left on their own, turns that into a revenue forecast, and that becomes slightly ugly. So, saving money. First thing is to get out of your office, get out of the boardroom. Um, Peter's talked about a whole lot of ways you can do that, and I think they're all wonderful ways. There's more basic ways of literally talking to people. Um, it really comes down to budget. If Peter, and I, I'm not sure if this is what you're saying, but I kind of heard this, if you're saying that you can, $30,000 project where you touch the customer twice or so, you can do for, you can touch them 30 times for $30,000. If that's what you're saying, this is the magic business card you need, because that's a wonderful, wonderful value solution. But if you can't do that, you need to find cheaper ways. And I, I would be, sh it always shocks me. And it's particularly, I have to say, I'm doing a lot of work with Telstra, how things that everybody knew had to be shown in a report. And um, if you actually talk to your customers, you learn 90% of the really obvious problems with a product. Um, now, who should do the research? Does anybody recognize this charming man? Uh, he is, or was, a, a quite famous scientist. Um, his name is Richard Dawkins. He came up with a wonderful idea called the selfish gene, which is really a metaphor which says that survival of the fittest takes place at the level of the genes. Each gene kind of fights don't quite understand what it means, but I think it's very clever. Um, but he's much more famous for writing this book, and you can't quite read it there, called The God Delusion. This book has outraged and offended people throughout the world. I think he even had a fat white taken out on him. His basic contention is that religion is stupid and that people who believe in religion are stupid. Um, for a lot of people, it's a highly offensive view. I'm not in any sense getting involved in the discussion about whether or not it's a good view or not. But good research is done by people who doubt everything. Um, 
there are lots of other skills that we might have, like listening and things, but at the end of the day, a level of cynicism, if you like, is paramount to doing good research because there are so many reasons for research not to be believed, and the one thing you need to have is at the end of the day that no one's able to ask a killer question which goes, did you take into account the following? Unless the person doing the research themselves is pretty cynical, there's a huge chance something quite important gets left out. Um, if you want to do your field work yourself, it used to be we just had the omnibus that we could do where we'd put a couple of questions on a survey and get some help from the research company. Now we can write a questionnaire, any client can do this, send it off to one of these various power companies, OIU, Research Now, I believe Peter's company helps get the same kind of service, don't you? Um, where you write a questionnaire and somebody sends you back your data file and they can send it back rather quickly. It can all happen in about a week. Um, that's, that saves a fortune because if you're going to do an online study, if you get if you instead write the questionnaire yourself and do the analysis yourself, your costs are really going to be in the order of 10 to 20 per cent if you go to a research company. But it won't be as good if it's a lot cheaper. Um, setting up your own panel, people talk about a whole lot of ways of talking to customers. There's actually one brand which really sticks out in this space, which is a company called Vision Critical, which many of the customers who don't use my company as much don't do it because they've got their own little online hosted community with Vision Critical. Or you can do everything yourself. You can spend 25 grand a year buying your actual top of the grade commercial software. Or you can go to somewhere like SurveyMonkey where they pay peanuts to do reasonable market research. There's lots of ways you can do it. If you need to do analysis from a point, there's only one product you'd need to use. Um, that's my product just in case there's any confusion. <laughs> uh, <coughs> but coming back to the more serious game, the if you've got a limited amount of money, the real focus needs to be on trying to create value. And then this is a really obvious message, but it's one which I think gets lost quite a lot. I'm going to show some pretty basic frameworks coming up. Um, but if you look around, uh, I, if you look at the global financial crisis and the opportunities that have been presented, there's kind of three broad ones that I keep reading out. One is the ability to sack employees. Um, you can debate the ethics to the end of the world, but it's clearly a great way of improving the bottom line. It was a great opportunity for big companies. You can sack customers, same idea. You, everyone's got customers who cost more to service than they bring in, get rid of them. But the last big thing that there's been a lot of talk about is this idea of the new mindset. Consumers are fearful and they're introspective, and I love this word, they're bunkering. I don't quite know what it means, but I love it. They're localising. I'm not sure this is really a good focus for marketing. So that with marketing, there's always this basic risk, I think, we run, which is there's a fine line between when we're creating value and when we're trying to trick people. And for me, 